Hi everyone and welcome back. Today I have a really fun project for you. I will be creating a mini album and I'm going to use the crafty shapes. This is the camera crafty shapes. It is uh, from my new Dewdrops collection and it is MDF. So it gives you all those elements that you can uh, uh, stick on top of your camera. There's no right or wrong or no where you can uh, stick everything or which side you want to use. Um, however, I had this idea to use this as my cover of an album and uh, I want to turn this lens into a shaker element. So since this MDF is going to be the front of my uh, album, I need to have a rectangle for the back of my album. So I'm going to place it on top of this cardboard. I simply marked how uh, big my rectangle should be and now with my craft knife I'm just going to cut it out. I'm using a metallic ruler and I don't apply pressure at all on my craft knife. I just go uh, lightly over and over again until the cardboard separates. It is quite thick this one so I need to do a few extra passes. Now my camera panel does have rounded edges, so I'm using my scissors and I will do rounded edges on the back as well. And of course depending on how thick that chipboard is, you can definitely use a round puncher, a corner chamber, whatever you have. I'm using my scissors and it's just fine. By the way, today I'm using my new essential tools from my latest collection. I will do an unboxing video on those, but you get to see them in action today. So for covering those panels, I am going to use pattern paper from Dewdrops collection. I'm just trying to pick which ones I want to use. And I'm so sorry I have too much light on my craft desk at the moment, so it just washes out the colors. But in any case, I'm just trying to pick my favorites for the front and the back of uh, my camera panels. And of course I need two pieces of paper for each one of the panel, front and back. So I'm just roughly uh, cutting out what I need with my craft knife. And I'm not planning to wrap those panels with the pattern paper. I'm just going to stick that on top and then uh, cut off the excess. You will see what I mean in a bit. Just make my life easy. So for sticking down everything I will be using my craft glue. I'm just going to cover up the whole camera and I will use a brush to make sure that I apply this glue all over the place. I don't want to miss any edges so the paper is going to stick nicely there and it's going to bond. This uh, glue that I'm using doesn't dry really quickly so it does allow me for a few moments to place the paper on top to just move it around until I'm happy with uh, the placement. I'm using my bone folder to make sure that I don't have any bubbles. And then with my craft knife, I'm just simply going to go all around and cut off any excess of the paper. No wrapping at all, which makes the job really quick and easy. By the way, this is my new craft knife and I'm working on my new craft mat. I'm super proud and happy with those tools. They work beautifully. They are not going to break the bank. They are great, decent, essential craft tools that every crafter needs. Now for the little details, I'm not going to uh, bother too much with the craft knife. I'm just going to bring in one of my sanding blocks and I'm just going to sand all around the edges. This is going to give a lovely distressed effect on the edges and at the same time it's going to hide any imperfections. Now of course I will repeat the same process for both my panels front and back with the magic of video editing. Here they are all ready to go. And then just because I didn't wrap the paper around the edges you can still see them. So I'm going to do my magic trick and I'm just going to cover them up just by dabbing some white acrylic paint all around. This is going to give the um, uh, look and feel of frosty edges. It matches perfectly with the theme of the pattern paper that I chose with all those snowflakes. And I think it's a lovely finishing touch for a mini winter album. So of course I need to do both my panels front and back. 
And now I will work on the camera lens, so I want to do some embossing on top of it to make it look metallic and shiny. That's why I'm using my embossing ink pad. I'm going to make sure that it is nice and juicy. And then I will apply gold embossing powder on top. I make sure that everything is nicely covered and then I will use my heat gun to melt and set the embossing powder. And you see I'm just resting it on top of this scrap piece of paper so I don't have to <laughs> burn my fingers while melting the embossing powder. Now let's turn this camera lens into a shaker element. I'm going to use some craft glue and I did cut out some acetate. I made sure that it uh, matches the shape of uh, my lens. And for the acetate, I always like to recycle packaging that comes in my craft room. I just hold on to those acetate pieces and I cut them out for shaker elements. So here it is, it's looking really good. Now let's add some foam tape at the back, which is going to give us the height that we need so that the shaker elements can move inside. I have those very thin strips of foam tape. I get them from waffle flowers and they are quite thick, so they are going to give enough space for the shaker elements. Just make sure that you don't leave any gaps so that the shaker elements are not going to fly away. So I found in my stash some tiny little silver stars which I find are really adorable and I'm just going to make a pile and then just stick the camera lens on top and trapping all of those inside. I'm going to press and I absolutely love how it looks. Now for the little button I'm going to repeat the same process so I will use my embossing ink and uh, add some uh, gold embossing powder. Stick it there with my craft glue and my panel, the fourth panel, is pretty much uh, done. All I need to do is to embellish it with some extra elements. But I'm going to leave it for now and I will work on the inside of my album. So I need to create the spine as well as the pages. After measuring, I found out that the best size for the mini album is to have pages that are 3 by 5. These are a good size and I'm going to show you how they look on top of uh, the album, leaving a little bit of a border all around. So that's the size that I'm going for and uh, with the magic of video editing, here are all the pages already cut out. I went with six pages but you can use as many pages as you like or for your album and then adjust the spine. Now I'm not going to show you how I did the spine, I just used the normal accordion spine. There are plenty of videos on how you can do that on uh, YouTube and if I included that technique as well in this video it would make the video super long. So anyway, I did create my spine, I'm folding all those creases for my accordion spine, then I'm going to stick everything together so I have those mountains and valleys, and then I will stick all the pages where they should go. So once you put that accordion together and you know how wide this is, then you can measure depending on the amount of pages that you decided to add in your album and you can create the spine. So here I just cut out a piece of cardboard again and I'm just going to cover it with pattern paper. On one side you see the pattern paper is uh, a bit wider than the actual spine. I'm using my bone folder to reinforce those creases and this is where I'm going to stick my other panels. So I zoomed in for you since what I'm showing you today is how to make the actual cover. And you can use either your craft glue to put everything together or double sided tape. It really depends on what you like. So after gluing everything together, this is our main album. And remember that spine depends on how many pages you decided to add into your album. So now you do have a space where you can stick your accordion spine, like so. And again, you can use either craft glue or double-sided tape and then stick all the pages on those mountains. So after putting everything together, here is how it looks. You can definitely go ahead and use ephemeras or die cuts or other elements from the same collection 
to decorate your um, uh, front if you want or you can use it as it is nice and simple it does have that element of uh, interaction with the shaker lens so it looks uh, beautiful as it is however since i do have those ephemeras i'm going to pick some of those and decorate the front and I didn't cut off this part of the video so that uh, you can see how I like to play with the elements before I commit and stick them down. I just pick different elements here and there and uh, play around to decide on my composition. Now let me zoom in for you so you can see better what I'm doing. One thing that you need to remember is that these ephemeras that I'm using are self-adhesive, which means that you can definitely peel off the backing and stick them down. However, you see I'm using here glue just because some part of it is going to be exposed at the back. So I never peel off the backing and I just stick them there as they are. The ephemeras are nice and thick. They are like cardstock, which makes them nice and sturdy and they are great for album covers. Now, if you know me, I cannot finish a project if I don't add a word, a sentiment or a quote somewhere. So that's what I'm doing here. This is an album, so I think that uh, the word remember is really appropriate. Now you can definitely leave it as it is, it looks stunning, but because I don't know when to stop with little details, I'm going to add kind of a snow look on pretty much everything. So with a very stiff brush, I'm adding some white acrylic paint, just dabbing on some areas on the flowers, on top of the button, a little bit on the lens. I did dilute the acrylic paint with water and I'm adding some splatters as well on my album. And now of course for the inside, the sky is the limit. You can do pockets, you can do flaps and uh, add tags and everything. I mean, uh, you can do whatever you like in your album. I'm not going to do the pages at all. However, I'm going to decorate the inside backing of the album. So I went to create a closure for my album with ribbon and I'm using my fabric again from the same collection. What I like to do is to use my scissors and rip off a couple of strips. This way I have a lovely ribbon with the colors of the collection that matches perfectly with everything I have already on my album. So I am going to use those, one for the front and one for the back. You can use glue to stick them down on the inside of your cover. I align the album cover with the grid of my mat so I know that I have uh, uh, placed that ribbon in the middle of my album. And then on top I'm just going to use one of those uh, cutout pieces from the pattern paper to cover it up. Now this is where you can create your pockets for the back and the front. I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. But you can add other elements, create clusters there. Uh, there are so many elements that you can cut out from the paper pads. I will repeat the same process for the front. Again, cover it up with one of those tags. And this gives me already a background where I can build up a little cluster. So think of this uh, album that I shared today as your base. You can just have fun then and decorate all the pages. And of course, leave enough space for your photos or for documenting your everyday. And here it is all ready to go. Absolutely happy with how it looks. And it gave me the opportunity to show you some of the new products from my Dewdrops collection in action, both the scrapbooking uh, collection as well as the tools. So just like always, you will find links to everything I used down below in the description. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired today. Here are some close-up photos where you can see the details better. Thank you all so much for joining me and I'll see you all next time.